Good morning. Good Morgoth. <laughs> we'll be sculpting Morgoth today, continuing our uh, adventure. Getting this arm fully detailed and locked in. It's probably it's probably where we'll be able to get to today. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll get the arm detailed. Get them in the oven, and then go from there. Good morning, Peter. Jones, Looney Lorna. Corn, torn. Corn and torn. True. Enjoy your lurk, Blacksmith Pop. What's up, Danny? Hello, PB. Mr. Merrick. Sprocket. I got Sprocket. Clayton. Is anybody? I don't think so. Friday. It's Friday. Already, what the heck? Okay. Let's get to work. And up here. Yeah, normal kitchen oven. Nothing special or fancy. Gonna make some adjustment on the anatomy before we brush it and lock it in and start doing the textures. Hello, Colleen. Good morning. Mushroom hunt today after stream. Emma too. That'll be her first. Be exciting. It's very soon, right? We're at a three-day countdown, I think, so what, two, two days left? Talk to strangers, PB. Come on.
That's true. There's a lot of that. I can attest to that. key to avoiding any and all scams is never react in fear and don't click links <laughs> If you must click a link, use a link checker. Uh, I did use reference for these arms, but not right now. Right now I'm just thinking about how the skin kind of bunches up right here. I can get pretty far without reference. I'll just use reference to push one step further, you know what I mean? I can make an arm that looks good without reference, but I know there's more I can glean and learn from if I do use reference. So I'll t I tend to start it, start like anatomy off on my own, and then, and then uh, as I get deeper into it, then I'll pull up the reference and make sure everything's looking good. Land of a chip, land of cheap dental work, and over the counter antibiotics. <laughs> some perks, some perks right there. Does it? I'm trying to think. needs a guitar some goat legs some furry goat goat legs I think that's old Mexico oh really I don't do that anymore what the heck as you can tell I haven't been there in a long time <laughs> Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Okay. Old Mexico. Not New Mexico. Let it be known throughout the land. New champions have been welcomed by our honored recruiting hand. Create with Nate, you spoil me so good. Thank you very much for the five gifteds, my friend. Welcome. Welcome new members. Thank you so kindly there, Create with Nate, for that daily boost. <laughs> Hey, hey, thanks for spanning it out over, you know, because cause if we did it all at once, then we'd have a subpocalypse. Now we can have a, steadil, a, steadil, a steadily uh, decrease next month. <laughs> so we got gillyweed for you, some gillyweed. As a skilled alchemist transforms base metals into precious gold, may you turn everyday moments into treasured memories. 
Indeed. That, that is a good one. So very true. Oh, the simple things we take for granted and do we no longer have them anymore. All we can do is try to recognize those things and not take them for granted as best we can. The, sure, the shoulders are going to be covered up, but I'm not sure where that line will be. That's why I kind of flesh the anatomy in there. I used to do that a lot more. Now I'll be a little bit more strategic about which areas I'll fully render. I've cut cut back on that a little bit, little bit. Now nowadays when I over render, it's more so because I just don't know what parts will be covered or how much. So it's best to just render the whole area. You know, just in case. Like his shoulders, for example, I didn't, I don't know where the cutoff's gonna be with the armor and stuff. So I just rendered the shoulders. Even though they very well might all be cut off.
Corrin has joined the fray, huh? Hey, what's up, crazy Cujo? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Now, that's a name I haven't seen in a little bit. How you been? We've been expecting you. D&D like uh, just cl classic D&D yeah of course it's, a f it's fun okay you know let loose and allow yourself to get into the game it's a game of imagination after all but it's fun Lord of the Rings D&D. Okay. It's just like D&D takes places takes place in the Tolkien universe. Oh man, I can't even imagine how many end my axes we that that type of game would bring out. <laughs> oh man, there'd be way too many just cliché Lord of the Rings quote moments. One does not simply roll a natural 20. <laughs> every every time an enemy gets killed, that still only counts as one. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this is a type of polymer clay. Ask clay.
you know, I'm excited for when Emma gets to the age where I can share Lord of the Rings with her. But I'm wondering if it's going to be like one of those things, you know, when you have a, when you used to have like a grown up or a parent that was so excited to share a movie or something with you and, and you've seen it and you're just like completely unimpressed by it. <laughs> but you just go along with watching it just because they're so excited about it. Yeah, that was great. What if it's one of those things? I just have to hype it up properly. I wonder if they do movie theater uh, showings still. That would probably be the best. Seeing it in theater. Hype it down so they're impressed. So they impress us. Yeah, exactly. Hey, you want to watch this? Uh, is it Lord of the Rings film? Looks all right. <laughs> Or, or better yet, have her discover it and invite me to watch it. That's even better. Well, I'm not saying right now. I'm just saying when she gets older. Yeah, definitely, definitely not right now. Definitely not anytime soon. I know. I'll get the I'll get the Blu-ray. I'll get a Blu-ray copy of the Lord of the Rings. And I'll put it on like a shelf with like chains and a big lock. Yeah. What's that? Like, oh. We don't we don't touch that. Absolutely forbidden. We especially don't watch it. <laughs> you have the Blu-rays? Read the book to her so she appreciates the movie even more. I don't know, I always find there's contention between the book readers and uh, the movie the movie lovers with anything, with any uh, type of uh, subject matter. So it could, it could have the opposite effect. Because people that love the book are always like, well, the book's better. It's like, well, yeah. They have way more time to tell you way more details of the story. Of course, it's better. Yeah, exactly. All books are going to be better than the movie. I don't get it either. You can't really hold them all. You can't hold a movie and a book to the same regard. Right, yeah. Then I'll go off the script too much. I heard I heard they're remaking a uh, never ending story. I, f I feel like it's gonna be like a Ghostbusters type of deal. It's gonna be a big flop. I'm still gonna watch it though.
All right, let's uh, kind of brush this down here and do the skin texture. We're gonna use clay glue to brush it. Hello, Jay Skellington. Did anybody watch that Wheel of Time series? I was thinking about starting to watch it. Is it any good? Didn't really hear much chatter about it. You liked it a lot? Okay. I still haven't even watched the new Lord of the Rings one yet. Watched one episode, Ring, Ring of Power. You loved it? Okay. Yeah, I, I really, I did really enjoy Fallout. That was good. Hey, I'm, I'm all for this. Uh, it's funny. It was like comic books came out, right? And now, and then they made movies into all the comic books, and then games. Now they're making movies into all the games. You know, there seems to be a method here. Strategy. It is really good, yeah. Very uh, in sync with uh, um, the world of Fallout. Uh, these are all commission pieces, so yes, yes, technically, I do. But it's all uh, custom, custom work, custom ordered. Oh, you're good. You're good. Four Things is the name of the movie. Yeah, Expanse is really good. Did they, uh, I'm trying to think if... Is that one, did that one finish? Did they finish that one? Or did it not continue? Yeah, oh yeah, that, they did cancel, okay. God, don't you hate that? Gets you so invested in a storyline, they're like, cancel. <laughs> There's another movie or another show that they canceled that I was really, me and the missus were really invested in. It was, uh, 
God, what was it called? It was like this... It was like humanity was living in this, uh, almost like encampment. There's like alien overlords and... And they intentionally like made the like the the weakest uh, humans the leaders kind of thing. And then they ended up the main characters ended up busting out of the of the. Uh, there's like an area where the rich people live. You know. God, what was that called? <laughs> well, you know, a lot, of, a lot of these shows and movies are just truth in plain sight. Serum. <laughs> God, what was it called? Uh, let's see. Let's, not, let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Agent Dunham. Uh, it had like a. It had like a scuffed Michael from the office as one of the main bad guys who became good. Scuffed Michael. What's that guy? What's that actor's name? That plays Michael in the office. What is that? Is it Colony? The Colony or something? No, no, that was that's that that's that one we were talking about yesterday. I think it's just called Colony. Yeah, okay, it was Steve Carell. Yeah. Three seasons. Yeah, it's called Colony. If you haven't seen it, it's still worth watching, even though it got canceled. Peter Jacobson. <laughs> That's the scuffed uh, Steve Carell. <laughs> he, he's good. He's... In the not too distant future, Los Angeles has been invaded and occupied by outside forces, causing a rift between the city's residents. Some have collaborated with the occupation, while others are rebelling and suffering the consequences that come with that choice. Yeah. I was really, really invested into the storyline of that one. Those, those sons of, sons of guns, canceling my show. Yeah, the guy from Lost. Yeah, he's the main guy. There's a few people from a few actors and actresses from Lost in that show. The, we watched the heck out of the office. It was so sad when it was over. <laughs> it's like a family member died.
you know that's something that's changed with me as I've gotten older too is I, I remember I used, to, I used to be able to rewatch things a lot when I was younger but it's like now I, I have zero desire whatsoever to rewatch things unless it's like really good and it just came out or it's been like at least 10 plus years since I've seen it but even then, man, it's. I'll be like, I like the idea of rewatching something, and then when I actually go to sit down and do it, I'm like, eh, nah, nope, nope. <laughs> we just rewatched that. <laughs> I don't know why. That, that, I used to rewatch stuff all the time. Now, now I don't at all. I can't, I can't, I can't bear it. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a side effect of there just so much new things that haven't even been seen. You know? I spend my time re-watching something I already watched when I can watch something new. Or play something new. So, so there's actually a funny show called uh, it's a it was it's like a Viking Vikings parody comedy show. Oh, what's that one called? Northman? That that one's good. That might that might be one that they also stop doing. Baskets. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, we were we were sad about that too. Yeah, as like we were waiting for more to come, but it never came. Northman, it was very funny. The right balance, the right the right kind of funny too. You know what I mean? There's, I can't stand today's definition of funny. Sometimes, just like extremely vulgar or. Just way over the top. It was, it's a good balanced funny, Northman. <laughs> Some good satire, for sure. I don't dare. I don't dare browse the today's comedy uh, movie section ever. <laughs> I just know I'll be uh, disappointed ultimately. Hello, Blue Star. Doing good, man. It's Friday. It's always a good day to be.
Yeah, would you say hey, sorry about your face? Couldn't hear you. Ah, yes. You know, they're just gonna, they're just time capsuling all these things, and then they're gonna do more remakes later. All those shows that were canceled will get, there'll be an age of uncanceling, where they'll pick up all the shows that everyone loved, that they canceled. But then we'll hate it because they have completely different actors and actresses because they waited so long. But then by then, actually, you know, by then they'll have the AI ability to actually keep the same actors and actresses. Maybe that's the, that's the secret plan. They'll just be able to superimpose the faces of the characters, the original characters, onto whatever actors and actresses they use through AI. That's the master plan, I bet. Like, well, if we keep going with the show here, we're eventually going to have to stop because our actors and actresses are going to get old. But if we just wait till the technology catches up, we can make the show forever. Why hasn't anyone done anything with Redwall? That's a good question. Oh, maybe they don't Maybe they didn't sell their the rights or anything. Maybe maybe whoever's owns owns the rights to it isn't uh, allowing anything to be done with it. That would be my guess. Hey, what's up, Greg? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, sorry about your face. There's a few seasons of Redwall animated. Oh, really? Okay. Just never heard of it. Biker Mice from Mars. Nice. S sounds super cool. <laughs> it's like when they come up with these ideas, they just like put a bunch of cool ideas into a hat and pick like three of them and combine them together. Mice, Mars, and bikers. All right, here we go. Let's make a show. <laughs> it's an effective creative strategy. It's 
simple. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You know, it's if a, a simple idea executed well is usually good. It's a, it's a pretty uh, tried and true method. All right, I think we're ready to start doing our textures here. I just can't remember if I did the... Actually, no, I think we do the veins first. The veining. Then we do the skin texture. Ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, th thank you. Thank you, Greg. Did you get, uh, is your Shavant locked in and ready to go there, Mr. Greg, for this weekend? So we have, we have a uh, painting class. I have painting class. So we'll start right after painting class is done so it's usually around noonish just um uh don't forget to warm up your clay <laughs> and this time don't worry so much about uh like i said the, the way it reacts with heat is way different so uh you don't have to worry about overheating it Good morning, mother. Me and uh, me and Greg had a big flop. I uh, me and, me and Greg are starting a new class project together for for one on one sessions, and uh, he he wants to do my new method of uh, sketching the character before we actually get into the sculpt so uh i advised him to buy monster clay instead of uh instead of um chavant right and uh thinking it, you know, it's pretty much the same and uh it was completely different <laughs> he spent the, our whole first session uh stopping his sculpture from like just melting <laughs> essentially <laughs> so so we had we had him get some Shavant. apparently the way it like retains heat is way different so new from Shavant is alien yeah but that's just them Shavant just trying to kind of rip rip uh, monster clay it's just their version of monster clay that's just more expensive so it's just the way the way uh Shavant works and the way monster clay works is different so I thought they were pretty much the same. First camper weekend. Oh, nice, Mom. Where are you headed to? It's exciting. I only got two pounds. Is that enough? Looks like I used two pounds of monster clay. Uh, yeah, it should be. Should be. Should be enough at least to get our idea, you know visualized so a few if if we run short you can we can always uh or if we're worried about it we could always bulk up with foil first yeah we'll probably do that we'll probably just bulk, we'll bulk with foil first so that way we don't have to worry about it like just in the chest area yeah start rock all right it's good, good first uh, adventure. Not too far. Yeah, uh, yeah. My, the way monster clay holds heat, it holds heat way longer than uh, Shavant does. Shavant cools down and kind of gets its structure way quicker. 
not, that's what the problem was is is he had his he had his monster clay heated up uh and it was just wanting to fall off the armature literally like just melting off of the armature Lots of people say not to micro. Yeah, I don't micro. I either use the oven. Just turn your oven on like the lowest temperature setting, which I think is like 170 for, for mine. Just put it in there. Make like a tin foil like bowl essentially. Finally got cold for stiffness after nine hours. Yeah, <laughs> you can make a hot box. Yep, I've done that before. That's pretty convenient having in the hot box. I've also used a crock pot, but I'm not a big fan of the crock pot to be honest. It's uh, the way it heats the clay up is very uneven and like very much like um, just like it's like turning it into clay soup and just melting it. It works though. I mean, it definitely works. That's all you got. Are you going with anybody to start rock map or is it, or is it just you? Is this a solo camping excursion? We're going uh, we're going mushroom hunting today. It'll be Emma's first mushroom hunt. Bunch of people. Okay, good. Hey, thank you. Hey, Pajama Llama, how you doing? Welcome back, my friend. The oven, yeah. <laughs> After we just get done talking about how the microwave sucks, I will give the microwave a try. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Instead of Saturday morning. Hey, what's up, bro? Reference here. I need a reference. All right. 
right, Looper. Hit the road, hit the hit in the road, huh? When you guys leave today. Let's see, uh... Whew, excuse me. I swear I sneeze at the same time. What time is it? 8, 11 a.m. I feel like I sneeze. I have one big sneeze in the morning at the same time every day. Feels like that. I am in uh, Quad Cities, if you know what that is. It's a nice little spot right on the border of Illinois and Iowa off the Mississippi River. Our difference. Do I have a name for my workshop? Nope. It's just called the workshop. It's known as the workshop around these parts. <laughs> If I were a looper, my workshop would have a name. <laughs> and my car. Snowball's looking forward to the journey.
20 euros a block. That's about, what, 15 or 16 here, so I guess it's not that much of a difference. Does that include the shipping? Included. Okay. Well, I can say the prices have gone down. Used to be more, I think. I knew, I knew that would be the case. Get cheaper. For you overseas guys and gals. guy's dehydrated uh, he's been floating around in the void I don't think they have much water in there
Yeah. He couldn't resist but corrupting his own water supply. <laughs> His bad tendencies just corrupt everything around him, even to his own demise. Hello, Annie. Anti croak, anti croak. Annie. I'm just going to call you Annie. Now we blend these in here. If it works for you, it works for me. Um, sometimes it happens. I did, but I'll just I'll just uh, screw on a piece of wood on the bottom that's wider. If that happens. So it's never, never a problem, never an issue that can't be fixed.
myself quite the hard to reach spot there, that's for sure. Use a different tool. Ball stylus. Now let's take the brush with the clay glue again and really blend those down.
All right, let's do the skin texture next. But first, let me get some coffee. Oh, hey. Anonymous gifter. Hey, sorry about your face. Thank you so much, man. Sorry, I missed I missed that one. For some reason, anonymous Welcome, gifts don't new adventurer, uh, to trigger my alarm. Great deeds and bravery. Not sure why. Thanks be to our recruiter for their wise choice. Oh, uh, I would say probably around 500 grams of clay. Maybe a thousand. Just in case. But you won't use the whole a thousand. Maybe it'll be like 800 or 600. All right, let me get some coffee. I'll be right back. Okay. Let's get this skin texture on here. Start with where the deeper lines are, so like on the elbow and stuff.
Is there a way to watch you create your projects from zero, like building the base, the armature, and so on? Well, technically, yes, here. Um, we have, we do have a few start to finish videos on YouTube that you can check out. There's also the class to look at if you're wanting to learn. There's a start to finish class. But, uh, if you keep tuning in here, eventually you will see things start to finish. <laughs> As projects finish up, it will start new ones uh, that will all be done here, too. The Banishers video we just released, yeah. Definitely check that one out. Right. Yeah, we were, I was thinking the same thing. Ten, we usually shoot for 10 minutes, 10 minute videos for those. We, just had, we had a ton of footage for that one, so. You have to imagine that's just the, that's the cut version, you know, there's all kinds of footage. It'd be a very long video if we add it, if we put all the footage together. But yeah, it takes, it takes, uh, it takes probably about Ina maybe a week a week and a half of working on just that full time for editing a video the, the more we kind of get into that the more I, I think about these youtubers that do this for a living you know and they make a one video a month or actually i think some even no they make one video a week just think about that think about that i don't know how they do it They just work a lot, I bet. Right. 
Yeah, that's just the editing. The week and a half, about a week and a half of editing. Um, then they're not including all the filming time, yeah. It's like, it's like a garden. You work really hard to prepare a garden and plant seeds in the hopes that someday those seeds will grow into something you can consume. It's the same thing. It's also just, uh, you know, the more we do stuff like that, the better we get at it, the more efficient better the quality, you know. I think a, a great upgrade for our setup that would um, make things even better, more streamlined, is um, having a another camera that's stationary. That's you know viewing kind of the work area. Uh, that's always recording essentially just for like time-lapse footage kind of thing it just gives a gives another angle and then it fills in any blanks that maybe uh like you know wasn't able to get here during the the creation process on a certain part or whatever just had to figure it out logistically because we're talking a lot of footage, you know? Figuring out how to store it. Or if I can somehow figure out a way to get a DSLR camera on the shirt cam instead of a webcam, that could be another not only a video making upgrade, but a stream upgrade.
Hello, mom and pop. Hey, just a quick shout out. Uh, so Emma's birthday party is on Wednesday of next week. You guys want to tune in for that? And uh, there's a wish list linked down below in the stream if you want to send her a gift. Kind of winding down on the time in which you can do that and get it here in time. So anything sent will be wrapped up in gift wrap and opened here live. What time? Yes, but we'll we won't start at 7 a.m. Emma's not up at that point. Probably like 9 a.m. I think 9 a.m. is good. We'll go live and uh, yeah, that way she can have breakfast and all that stuff. Uh, no, I don't think so. I'll sing. I'll sing for all of us. I'll be your voice. Hello, Harry. How do you do?
Ah, uh, that's all right. It's just nothing important. Just spitting ideas on potential future improvements and stuff. Yeah, sure, no problem. to a land of great deeds and bravery. Thanks be to our recruiter for their wise choice. Thanks, Anonymous. Whoever you are, thank you very kindly. I am doing all right there, Harry. Doing good, man. Yes, weekend is here. Be careful. It'll run away it'll run away from you and be Monday real quick. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna consciously stare at the clock all weekend. Hello, Jin. <laughs> I enjoy weekend, but I wouldn't enjoy weekend as much if I didn't have the week. It's good to remember that. I enjoy pushing really hard and working real hard on the week to relax and enjoy the weekend. Both, both are required to enjoy the other. get bored so the weekend is longer <laughs> that's that seems that seems purpose defeating though <laughs> well I had a nice long boring weekend <laughs> what would you rather have a long boring weekend or a short relaxing enjoyable weekend that's the question Counting every rack in my yard, you. <laughs> Honestly, my my personally my weeks fly by just as fast as my weekends. It's all it's all about making the most of each week.
Yeah, same, Merrick. It's interesting how that is. Is that a is that a side effect of getting older too? You find boredom to be less of a possibility. Can't remember the last time I was bored. If I get bored, I just fall asleep. <laughs> or is it because you're so busy not being bored and doing things that when there's nothing to be done, you can finally get some rest and catch up. That's how, that's how I feel sometimes, man. When I, uh, when I put my feet up, it's like perpetually playing catch up with, with, uh, t taking it easy. And I think back of all the days, uh, <laughs> well, all the days younger me took it easy all, literally all day. Said, what are you doing? Go back in time, smack you upside the head. Get to work. <laughs> I think I'll actually shoot a garden update video this weekend, okay? I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and commit to that. Cause it's looking really nice back there. Got all my ro my rows of onions coming in. Lettuce growing really nice. Radish, sunflowers, garlic. Chives, chamomile. What else, what else is growing? Some of the brassicas are starting, but they're still really small. Jerusalem artichokes. Even if it does, those so those variety those plants a lot. And I've learned this about a lot of plants. The the ones that they say are cold hardy are really actually cold hardy. You know, like to the point where a freezing night here and there is not gonna kill them. So all those all those things I just listed there can take a free can take a frozen night. No problem. Potatoes are, oh, actually, my potatoes are even coming up. That's right. 
potatoes have popped out of the ground. Hey, thanks, Philip. Thank you. Thanks for watching, my friend. Blanking in our skin texture. Yeah, it's, it's never done, Sarah, seriously. You know what I'm trying to learn, or I'm, this, this month, or this year is really a, a testament to that, but instead of looking at dates on a calendar on when to plant things, you read, you read what nature's doing, you know? You look at, you look at when the bugs are coming out, you look at, uh, when certain plants, na like, uh, Wild plants are coming out of the out of the ground. You don't look at the calendar, and you just know when to start certain things. You know, a bit a big help is actual volunteers. I knew I could plant my sunflowers because I saw baby sunflowers so <laughs> from seeds that the birds got last year and scattered among around the yard. You know. So as soon as, as soon as I saw those, I was like, oh, time to put sunflowers in. Plata's boat, what's that? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean I I think I I think we've been a little more mild over here too. Definitely gotten things started way earlier this year. I also think like so plants when they're like really small are in danger of you know frost and stuff like that but by using the cup method that i use it prevents the frost from even touching the uh those plants little insulation layer you know usually around emma's birthday i'll actually get tomato seeds and stuff in the ground Definitely think I can do that. We don't plant seeds till the end of April. The work van was frozen yesterday morning. <laughs> yeah, if you use the cup method, you don't have to worry about those random frosts just wiping out your baby plants. Which, if you don't know what the cup method is, I take plastic, clear plastic cups. And when I plant my seeds, I put a plastic cup over the seed. And then I hill up the dirt and stuff around the cup so it doesn't blow away. And it creates a... It creates a, a, a micro climate inside the cup. Stops harsh winds from killing your little babies, or, or, uh, or random frosts, and makes it just a little. It makes it warmer on the inside of the cup than the outside of the cup because of the greenhouse effect. Yeah, you know, it's. I think everyone, everyone's capable of growing things. It just sometimes it just takes time to understand, you know, 
So just keep, be patient with yourself. You're gonna mess things up. I've I've planted many a things and not been successful at it. But just keep keep trying. Cultivate seeds this year too. Oh, like uh, collect your seeds? Yeah, I do. I do seed collecting for sure. So, carrots and onions. Any anytime something's called biannual or biennial, you ever see that word? It means they produce seed every two years. Yeah, every. So the first year that plant grows, like a carrot or an onion, it does not produce seed. But if you leave it in the ground, overwinter it, the next season it comes up, it produces uh, seeds. So, so that was that was one thing I never really understood until later. It's like, why do some of my onions have seeds and the others don't? So in order to get seeds for carrots or seeds for onions, you just simply leave some of them in the ground and those become your seed supply. And literally, it's crazy, but I have them actually, Sarah. <laughs> That's funny that you mentioned that. I was hiking, me and the missus were hiking in the woods a, cu a couple, I think it was before Emma was born. We were hiking in the woods and I found a, a random onion in the woods. I knew it was an onion. So I harvested it, like dug up the dirt around it and then transplanted it into the ground. Well, it grows up into the, into a stalk like a normal onion, but up at the top, it grows like, like six little tiny onions, six little tiny, and then it tips over and then those six grow up and then they tip over and it's, it's like a walking, it's a walking onion. So I actually have some of that in my garden. They're a little bit like they don't grow as big and apparently they're more spicy. I haven't eaten one yet, so apparently they're like really spicy. Which I could see making some like pickled onions out of those. That'd be good. Yeah. spring onions yeah i mean i think spring onions and stuff like that a lot there's a lot of things we eat in our produce that are just young versions of certain plants for example bell peppers a green bell pepper a yellow an orange and a red are all the same bell pepper they're just picked at different stages of the life cycle which give different qualities so like a green pepper is just fresh, you know, like barely matured pepper. So uh, it's just more crispy, more water content, less developed. And then a red is fully developed. It's a color, color gradient. A red is fully developed, so the flavors are gonna be different. The, the, the texture is different, it's less water. And also it's worth noting, if you harvest seeds, your own seeds, let from a fruit any seeds you harvest from a fruiting body so like cucumbers or peppers or anything like that you want to harvest it from a fully uh, matured uh, fruit so you just leave it on the plant to literally just like starting to like fall apart or fall off the plant that's the one you harvest the seeds from because cucumbers we eat under under matured cucumbers we don't eat fully matured cucumbers no it's just so the seeds are mature the, the seeds on the inside won't be fully matured if you pick a, a, a young fruit the sacrificial dis yeah exactly yeah <laughs> Huge, they get zucchinis. Yeah, you pick them when they're really small, but if you let them get grow to full maturity, they're huge, they're ginormous things. And they'll change colors usually too, to let you know they're fully mature. Right, 
Right. Well, if you, let's say you pick like a green pepper and you harvest the seeds from it, I bet you the seeds are probably no good because they just haven't fully developed yet. So you would plant those seeds from a green bell pepper and nothing would happen because the seeds hadn't developed yet fully. It's also worth mentioning, so when you have a cucumber plant or a zucchini plant, its mission in life is to produce matured fruit that provides seed for the next generation. So if you let one cucumber get fully mature or one zucchini, the plant starts, it starts uh, exiting, essentially. It starts... Um, it's like, all right, it's missions complete. It stops production. So it's very important to make sure you don't let any to, to over harvest essentially. So. <laughs> Cause like if you have a cucumber plant and you're just consistently picking cucumbers off of it, as soon as you know, they're forming, it's going to keep spitting them out pretty much as fast as you can harvest them. So. Over here we have seeds sold as F1, which is when you plant the seed, they grow, but you can't grow more from the next lot of seeds. Well, that doesn't sound like, um, so what, they're genetically modified or something? How do they do that? <laughs> GMO, yeah. Yeah, get heirloom varieties if you grow if you're gonna grow f your own food. One of the reasons is to get away from that kind of stuff. So, just get what's called heirloom varieties. And what an heirloom is is it's seed that's been passed on from generation to generation. So you can get varieties that used to exist, you know, from hundreds, hundreds of years ago, you know. Heirloom seeds is what you want to, what, what, what you want to get. So you buy more seed the next year. Yeah, of course. Once you start getting into gardening, you realize how abundant, uh, how abundant the plant world is. So of course they want to try and stop that abundance because it's free abundance really. You know, you buy a packet of seeds, like onion seeds, for example. Actually, here, let me see if I can show you. A packet of seeds nowadays costs like anywhere from like two to four dollars, and you get like a small little amount of them. I might have my seeds in the other room. You start collecting your own seeds. That's where it's at, man. Yeah, I have this basket full of seeds here. This is all free. Here's just a few examples.
seed harvesting is really easy once you get the hang of it. These are, um, whatchamacallit, marigolds. So your marigold plant grows, it dies, and these little flower heads dry. Well, guess what? You pick the flower heads, just toss them in a jar or a bag or whatever, and each one of these... Look at this. Those are all seeds right there. This is like two dollars. This is like two dollars of marigold seeds. Isn't that crazy? If you were to buy them online or buy some seeds. Each one of these little stick things is a seed. Two dollars. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? This is probably harvested from one plant from last year. I actually have another jar out in the shed. But yeah, it's it's abundant. So so anytime you see a flower that you like, the look of it, mental note where it's at and go back in the fall and just grab the dried flower heads off of it. And you can plant your own flower. Trust me, nobody's going to mind you picking the dried flower heads off of their plants. So... This is um, another flower called Xena, same thing. It's a dried flower head. Yeah, here's the flower head. E each one of these, each one of these guys is a seed. Okay. These are all seeds. I'll try that in my front yard. <laughs> well, no one's going to care except Colleen. And then, of course, beans. These are from the garden from last year. Some black and some uh, kidney beans. Dried beans are great because they're not only food, but... But they can also plant more beans, so... So what I like to do is I have a budget every year, you know, maybe like, doesn't even have to be much, like 20 bucks. Buy some new varieties each year, but then make sure you're collecting the seeds and that way you never have to buy them again, so. Seeds last a long time. Long, long time. You know, five years plus, depending on the seed. The, usually the smaller the seed, the less time, or the more chance of it oxidizing, so. So, bigger seeds last longer. Just have to be dried, yeah. Spinach. Sometimes they don't mark the bags, and I gotta try and figure out it's radish. Depending on the seeds, seeds that go through winter would be fine being frozen. Actually, I think most of them would be fine because most seeds do get frozen um, naturally. Here's a little dried radish seed pod. I'm gonna just open this up here. And there's the seeds. One little pod. Five seeds. Oh. I have bags and bags of these things. So, dried, uh, dried radish pods. I don't even bother holding them. I just kind of keep them in the pods and then when I go to plant radishes I just grab a handful and I just crush it up and just sprinkle it everywhere it exceeds expectations 
I probably got about thousands of dollars worth of seeds. If I was to, if I was to sell them. For, like I said, practically free. It's no wonder people get into the seed selling business. Alright, back to work. <laughs> you want to buy some seeds, chat? Anybody want to buy some seeds? Got great deals. Great deals going on here. I'm also selling some graphics. If you're interested. <laughs> hey, want to buy some seeds? But no, it's it's mind blowing. You know, I grew up. I didn't really do much gardening growing up or anything. So you just don't know that stuff. When you actually start doing it yourself, you start to realize, wow, what an awesome, what an awesome abundant thing. And then, and then you combine that with identifying plants out in the wild, and then you can collect seeds from those plants and cultivate them yourself. And it's just a whole, whole awesome, fun world it is. And before you know it, you're growing morels in your backyard without even trying. <laughs> Want to buy some seeds? That's another, man, that's another, I think, really lucrative um, business is not only seed selling, but seedlings selling. Having a greenhouse, making a bunch of seedlings, and then selling the seedlings to the uh, the more casual gardener. Man, they make a lot. They make a lot. The cost of the cost of running an operation like that can be very, very little. A lot of communities have seed exchanges in the spring as well. If you look into it, yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, so I get my seeds. There's this guy called My Gardener. M I Gardener. M.I. Gardener, if you look that up. He's always had great prices and delivers in a timely manner and always has good selection. Uh, and then there's Baker Creek, but they're a little bit more pricey. Baker Creek. They're, they're more of like the mainstream heirloom seed supplier. Me holding a cap with seeds in it. <laughs> the seed dealer. We could make a character, the seed dealer character. He's the one who sold the the bean, the magic beans to Jack. The magical seed dealer. Hey kid. So you're selling the cow, you want to buy some seeds? I'll trade you. Gorilla Gardener. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we've developed we've developed quite a character. We do uh, bring him to life. I feel like he'd probably look a little bit like the the woodland gremlin we we got going already. Buy these, and gardeners are sure to succeed. Oh my goodness.
You get rid of pests organically if possible. Yeah, I don't do any sort of uh, pest control. There's ways around all the pests without the. You know what the thing is is spraying the chemicals is just the easy easy way. It's the uh, it's the convenience. So so much uh, wrongdoing in this world is done in the name of convenience. It's crazy. It's like the the number one uh, motivator. Vine weevil in the strawberry roots. So the way you deal with most pests actually is having a variety. Because um, one variety will suffer from a certain pest, but the others won't. You know. Thousands of aphids, black fly, white fly, and then there's companion planting, you know, which is like putting marigolds everywhere and garlic and onions and things that uh, they don't like. And there are natural, there's natural things you can do, like uh, look into neem oil. You can spray neem oil on your plants. Yeah, I'm not doing any gardening this year. Deer keeps eating my crop. So I, I don't think they eat onions. Can okay, at least onions and garlic. Or potatoes. Most animals don't like uh nightshade stuff. Also, um another so so here's here's some other natural remedies with dealing with pests uh soapy water will instantly kill any insect on uh on the spot so you get one of those pump tanks you know fill it up with some soapy water and if you're but be careful you can burn your plants with the soapy water so just make sure it's not that much soap and uh if you have like a infestation of some sort you can just directly just a little bit, little bit of dish soap and some water out. That's a, a great, great way to deal with bug problems. And then there's another, there's another, um, I really like uh, diatomaceous earth. Look that, look that up. Diatomaceous earth. It will also um, deal with, uh, any sort of any sort of insect that has a hard exterior exoskeleton but you have to be careful because you can also damage the ones that are beneficial to the garden so getting a little poofer is good to have for that though it's hard to spread that stuff without a poofer poofer it's like a little thing you squeeze you put the powder in there and you squeeze it and it poof, poofs the air out that's great for just having around the house any sort of rooms that have any bug problems you just go in there and poof poof it all over the place no more bugs salt the earth <laughs> Seen a squirrel eat hot chilies? Only took one bite, never ate them again. Yeah, <laughs> a lot, you know. And a lot of times, to to deal with pests, you have to just um, outgrow them. You know, sometimes dealing with the pests can cause more damage than actually just outproducing them. One year, I had a problem with squash bugs, and I tried fighting them with soapy water so much that I, I myself killed my plants. <laughs> and if I had just let the squash bugs live in peace and harvested whatever squash I could have got, I would have ended up getting more. Last year, I didn't get a lot of squash because of... Um, I had the vine borer... Uh, it's a type of insect that goes into the vine and puts like its babies in there and then it kills off the whole plant 
but I learned a really cool technique for fighting those. When you plant your squash and they get a little bit bigger, um, wrap aluminum foil around the base of the plant, and that's that's all you need to do. That's it. They can't get in. They only they only enter the plant through the base of the root, and uh, you just put like you're just putting armor around it essentially. So. So this year will be that's the technique I'll be using. Bay leaves, yeah. Get nothing the nose nothing yeah i i overgrow tomatoes because of uh animal poaching you just can't stop it all so the be best you can do is you know one of the things one of the tactics i'd use for feet uh for animals we don't have deer here thankfully but for small critters one of the ways you can fight them from eating your garden is feeding them <laughs> set up like a an animal feeder on the other end of the yard keep it well stocked and they, they won't it's like paying the toll you know deer are majestic until you live near them well, let's let's say in reality in a, a real survival situation the nose you would have you would have some fresh deer meat <laughs> just just set up in a bush right next to your uh next to your cherry tomatoes like all right buddies come on and come eat all you want <laughs> you can't beat them feed them that's right yeah small critters you just can't you can't stop them so you have to work with them <laughs> yeah we're, we're in the season of garden rants there Jin this, this happens from time to time I am able to hunt deer on my land with crossbow not a hunter wouldn't be able to shoot either All right. huh there you go. I'm sure there. I'm sure there's things that deer don't eat, though, that you could just kind of focus on growing those things. But tomatoes are always a wonderful joy of gardening, for sure. I, I love making like soups and sauces and stuff like that. Tomatoes, and it doesn't get better than fresh garden tomatoes. That's for sure. Well, I think this arm is done. Let me get this in the oven here. Good morning, fuel. Good morning, gravity. Yeah, same, Sarah. We're really going to focus on preserving the harvest this year with canning I want to get into the middle of winter and still be able to open cans of fresh tomatoes yeah exactly oh. That's awesome. And now's the time. Congratulations on the uh, house, by the way. So join our Discord. I'll be hopefully posting a garden update video. So if you guys want to see my garden at the beginning of the season, you'll see what it looks like. I'll make a nice tour video in the there's a green green greenhouse uh, channel there. 
that's where you guys can share your gardening stuff too so see what you guys got growing so if you do if you do grow I do I do feel all right let me go get this in the oven and we'll figure out what we're working on after that I'll be right back
All right. Oh, nice, Tor. Lemongrass. I've tried doing lemongrass a few times. Not, not been successful yet. Berry bushes. Okay, let's see here. And I wonder if we can, uh... <clears throat> See if we can maybe start the lighting for the skeleton pirate. Ordered the lights and got them in just recently. Let's see if I can find them. Yeah, lemon balm is really uh, tough stuff, and it and it spreads, which I like, cause man, I love I love the smell of it. I'll just go rip a leaf off and just crush it up and smell it. Oh, nice, the nose. Wonderful. Hey, Pajama Lama. Thanks for hanging out with us, my friend. We'll catch you later. The adapter. Got the plug in. Okay. This is the... Uh, this is side glow fiber optics. Switch. Some spruce, spruce tips, spruce tip beer. I have uh, two of the natural plants that grow here that are uh, nice. One is called mugwort, and uh, the other is um, lamb's quarters. Mugwort is. I love the smell of the mugwort, especially when it starts flowering. Yeah, you know, that was one thing I actually wanted to grow this year too. Was um, hops. Hops is a really good plant to grow. It looks nice. It smells nice. Even if we don't use it for like making beer or whatever. It's got a lot of other medicinal properties. All right, Colleen. We'll catch you later. You have a good time over there. The Mokomedians.
Yeah, I saw I saw them the other day. They're doing really good. They had a lot of people in there. Derek had a purple beard. <laughs> be having a good time. To drill a hole here. Do you have elder flowers in the USA? I don't know. I don't know what those are. Sounds like they're just as good as me at timing things. <laughs> All right. It's looking pretty nice over here. I think we're in for some good weather. To be honest. Okay. To first get this treasure chest mounted. Maybe start figuring out the light to be open. find out there's a set of wires here that we don't need and you find out if it's on this foot or this foot cool white blue and ice blue ice blue Here. So this connection point here.
will do. Okay, now let's plug this in. I'm hoping it's this one on the bottom foot. There's no battery. This will be a plug-in piece. So we just have to hide this little this little part right here. Okay, so we don't need this one. The reason we don't need that one is I made it too short. The ends of it are in there. So we can't really use it anyways. Raise this foot up. Oh, did I glue it? I did a little bit, okay. Okay, so we need to cut. We need to cut this wire off. Uh, exclamation LED will get you where I get mine from. And yeah, they, it's just like plug and play. Pretty much all set up, ready to go. Takes most of the thinking out of it for you. Which is nice. This wire we keep, this one can go. clean up that heel with the Dremel tool. Yeah, no problem. Oh, uh, I don't know if it's on, uh, I don't know if the lights are on kick. You just have to let me know. I can get you a link. It's a guy, he sells, he sell, he makes lights and sells them for model trains. Bought them a long time ago. 
a small little private company. Prices are really good. Quality. Okay, here we go. Listen closely, traveler, to what I say. Twitch Prime does not even cost a dime. Neovox, hey. Didn't you just resubscribe, man? I swear, it's like, it's like months feel like days or weeks even <laughs> hey thank you so much for the 36 months my friend I appreciate it how you been near Mr. Neovox Take a knife and clean that up a little further. It shows it two times each month. Okay, so I'm not going. I'm not going that crazy then. I guess. <laughs> see here Oh yeah, trim was a wonderful tool to have. Let me trim these little pieces of wire off the bottom here.
Okay. This is why you never enter the workshop without shoes, that's right. <laughs> now you know the reason for that rule. I'm about to show you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a bunch of little holes here. Um, and then we're going to use five minute epoxy. It's not very good. You need fifty dollars? Why? Nobody needs fifty dollars. We just want fifty dollars. Plus 2,000 in gambling? Yeah, you shouldn't do that. What did we learn? I just spent over $50. Plenty of people need $50. <laughs> I need $50. I mean, I want $50. We all want $50. Don't need it. Just want it. Never gambling again. Alright. Now you gotta stick to that, right? But if you fail again... Just... It's okay. It's perfectly normal to break habits like that. You just get back on the horse. Keep trying. dollars on clay
No, you're broke. That's all right. Money comes and goes, my friend. Let the humbleness of being broke help you make better decisions in the future. We all make mistakes. I'm so very glad. Uh, gam gambling can be such a destructive uh, addiction. Very glad that's not something I fell into. I can grab anybody. Be very careful out there, my friends. I'm just creating, I'm just creating, yeah, texture for the glue to grab onto. It would probably glue without this, but this is just extra security. I can make Luffy. Yeah. You know, people remortgage a house and gamble it all away. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's, it's that... So, the beginning of gambling addiction starts with... Of this idea of being able to do something simple and getting rich off of it without much work. Yeah. That's the thing you gotta let go of, you know? If if I am gonna become a rich person, I'd want to earn it, you know what I mean? Because the, the value of the money is nothing. The value of the ability, the work ethic, and skills you gain along the way, that's the true value. The money means nothing. Seems like a seems like you're playing a game. That's good. Look, I'm just one pull away. And then and then you get behind and then they think they can win it back, you know. They can get it back. That's that's when you're stuck. Money will not give you happiness, my friend. You see so many examples of that in society. It's that idea. I was like, yeah, but I'll be different. I'll be happy if I have a lot of money. No, no. It'll be the same. Wait, I don't need to have to do I'm not putting that in. Give me the money so I can be miserable. <laughs> Bandit. <laughs> Bandit, you're missing the point. <laughs> yeah, me too. I want to be miserable too. Hey, I'll take it off your hands, buddy. 
<laughs> right. That's right, Frozen. Exactly. Yep. Don't buy into this idea that you can... There's an easy way to get a lot of money. Other than doing some real evil things. That's about the only way. And uh, you don't want to go down that road. That's not a good road to go down seeking happiness. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't think you'll find it there. I can find the opposite. I mean, some people just have to live it out, you know? They're not gonna believe it, no matter what you say. Money in itself is not bad, but it just becomes, I think, becomes your main focus in life. It leads to a lot of bad things. But it, it in itself is a good is a is a good thing. It's just like fire or a knife, you know. Can be used. A knife can be used to carve a wonderful sculpture. Or cut food. Or do all kinds of positive things. Or you can stab somebody. <laughs> right. It's the love of money. That's the root of all evil, not money itself. All right, we're gonna glue this here on this. Uh, glue this on here. Be a little bit too much. It's a five minute epoxy here made by JB Weld. The house always wins. Yeah, even they place the, the long con and game of statistics because even the even the game that's probably the closest to being fair like percentage wise would be roulette which you would naturally think is 50 50 because you could pick red or or black but that's why they have the green see they have two green spaces so there's always a more there's the house always has the majority statistically you know so when you put you could you could put all your money on red and because of the green squares it's not a 50 50 chance but it's like a 49 percent or whatever house has the advantage right but if you truly love it then are you going to share it with other people? That's like your main focus in life. Oh. These are the questions we must wonder. Yeah. They forbid it because it's a losing situation for them. That's right. Right, so we have five minutes from when we mix this up till when it kicks off. Just want to make sure it's good and mixed. Make sure it gets into all these little spaces and holes and stuff.
I'm just saying the the whole gambling thing. That's the that's the root of it. I wanna I wanna make my living in this world by providing something of value to it. You know, more of like a side effect than a uh, than the real objective. Little bead of glue farming there. Let's try and clean that up. We'll hit it with the ultra matte varnish and go away. Ah, uh, yes. The, uh, whatchamacallit. The old Thanos. The old Thanos, uh, dream. <laughs> That's crazy. It doesn't surprise me, though, to be honest. Yeah, same platter. Same. I mean, I've been to Vegas myself. Was a long time ago, but yeah, it's just never, it's just never something I've never been into. Thankfully, thankfully. that solidify Let's start working on the how oh, we're gonna do the wiring here to do a lot of drilling a lot of surgery let me grab let's see this right here
We have to see which one of these looks best. Has the eye sprues. Lights, yeah. I think it's going to be the other one. So what I'm planning to do here is I'm going to make these like kind of like those classic cartoon skeleton eyes. That are just like those floating glowing dots using a fiber a thick fiber optic cable to simulate that Let's see so the end of the fiber optic will be lit up and it'll essentially take the place these are the little placeholder eyes i have here so just kind of take those out drill a hole feed this into there Let's see, let's see how it'll look. And then I want a light inside the rib cage, lighting up the whole inside of the chest cavity. That's the, that's the game plan for this piece. That part. Did I lose the little plug in. Where is it? steal it from this one hey thanks techno viking are you the are you the og techno viking <laughs> all right let's see here plug that in Trying to keep the legend alive, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's grab one of each of the colors and we can see which color we actually want to use here. Blue. Cool white. Let's grab one of each of these. Okay. Well, I have to turn the filter out so you can see the real colors. Let's see here. There you go. So that, that's the ice blue that's already on there. This is, let's see which one this one is. That's the cool white. And then this is blue. It's probably gonna be the ice blue.
a little bit harder for you guys to see. Ice blue, blue, cool white. Yeah, I think the ice blue. Also, it's it's really bright, which will help. And I can also see putting one of these blues in the in the chest cavity. Okay, so now hit this here. They all look the same. And they do look different in, in real life. Definitely different. So the idea would be to have like... Yeah, it's going to be cool. I can imagine. Don't cross the streams. Let's grab this one. There's the eye. Could see even doing the smaller one, maybe. Let's see. <laughs> it's Bingo Bongo going, the cello. with the other one. Yeah, probably the bigger one. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to drill a hole through the head out the back here. We have to dig out a large channel for the light. Yeah, I have a lot of, lots of work to do. Here's our connection point. We need to have one light going facing this way and one light Going into the rib cage down here. Okay, that's good. That's good to drill. Drill in. Need a drill bit.
Uh, we could add some smoke coming off a smoke trail coming off the gun. It was recently shot. It's a little bit too big. Maybe I do want to drill it a little bit too big. Size. All right, you know, I'll just drill it this size is fine. A little wiggle room is good. Hey, Frozen, have a wonderful weekend, my friend. Thanks for hanging out with us. Concert night, nice. Small concert or a big one? We're doing some surgery. That's good. I think I would prefer a smaller venue myself. Never actually been to a concert. <laughs> I almost went to win one one time. Almost. Constant ringing as a reminder. <laughs> All right, the temporary eyes have been removed. Let's drill our holes now.
First one was a success. Second one's gonna be harder. Doing this stuff? No, not really. Not really. Okay. I had a perfect exit. Exit wound is right below the bandana, which is right where I wanted it. Just get your angled bit, yeah. I didn't really didn't really think that through today. I could try coming in through the back. A little bit more risky. <laughs> Uh, maybe that's what we'll have to do. It's either that or we have to... We have to bend the arm out of the way. I don't like to gamble. <laughs> hey, what's up, Blue? Raid over on kick. Hello, Raiders. Come on in. Let's see. Let's, let's, do, let's do this here. The strength of the Sea Not Bush Kingdom lies not in our walls, but in our people. March to war. Hey, thank you so much, traders. Come on in. Who's raiding me? How do raiders come from Kick? I'm streaming on Kick right now. I'm streaming everywhere. There's uh. Santa Maria. Is it Santa Maria? I'm saying that right? Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate that. How was your stream? They'll never take us alive. Welcome in. We're uh, we're installing lights into a sculpture. If you guys are new here, I make uh, one-of-a-kind custom sculptures, all hand-sculpted and... This is a pirate character I uh, designed that we're, we're adding some LED lights into. I'll be putting some in his chest here, like that. And then in his eyes. Oh. Let's, not, let's not cross the uh, streams here. There we go. But yeah, we do all kinds of stuff. Uh, we got, let me show you guys some, some stuff we got going on. There's a uh, custom chess set piece here. Yeah, I was, I was definitely uh, inspired by Sea of Thieves when I, made, when I designed this pirate. Here's a, uh, here's a dragon I have in the works. Turn the filter back on. We do all kinds of things here. All kinds of different sculpture things in the works. So thank you. Thank you very much. I do commission work, so people people uh, hire me essentially or commission me to make all kinds of different things so yeah we're about we're doing some intense drilling surgery right now so wrap on in what does uh what does santa maria stream What's santa maria do i'm still not too familiar with other uh folks on on uh kick yet Still kind of the new kid on the block. Kick staff. Oh, wow. Okay. Santa Maria. I th the name, I recognize the name for sure. Cool. Well, well what does Santa Maria stream? Like talking about kick stuff. Q&A. Okay. Q&A. Cool. Well, I can say for a fact the staff at Kick has been awesome since I started here. They've made me feel more than welcome, so good, good, good people. Hey. 
All right, should we get to some drilling? So right now we're drilling out the eye holes so we can insert the LED lights into the eye holes. So, but this, we just did this one here successfully. Actually, you know, let's see how that looks before we even go further. Let's just see how. Let's see how this is looking. There's no plank to walk in it. Just feed it through this way. Okay, I see we're run, running into the collar. There we go. There we are. Pull that through. This is some fiber optic cable. Oh, definitely we'll have to line that up. He's alive. Alright, let's see. Let's see if this works exactly how I thought it would. Sometimes you need more hands. Hey, look at that. That's cool. Oh, let, me, let me turn the color filter on here. There we go. Good day, dear friend. Your contribution to the growth of our kingdom is invaluable. Thank you for your devotion. Engine Toros, 35 months of support. Thank you so much. There, Engine Toros. Let's see here. Let me get you your wisdom one second. I just want to see. We can bend that. You think it's stuck? I think you're right. Let's grab a wisdom for you, my friend. Dragon Tears, all right. Brace yourself, brave soul. The day ahead may be full of challenges, but remember, fortune favors the bold. Except when gambling. <laughs> Actually, no. It does. It does favor. It does favor the bold, even in gambling. <laughs> But it also doesn't favor a lot of bold people as well. Same time. <laughs> Curly Snow, hey, it's nice to meet you too. I appreciate that. All right, let's um, let's see here. Can I even see if I even come in from the back? Let's drill bit be long enough. It should be. Yeah, we should be good. All right, so now, now we have to drill this from the back side. How much have I been streaming here? Uh, every day. I don't know how long it's been. It's been a couple months now, I think. Two or three months. I go, I stream Monday or Sunday through Friday every week. Friday, we just have the morning stream. 
but um, three months, yeah. Um, I've been streaming on Twitch for a very long time, so I'm, I'm but Twitch just now, uh, uh, they just now allowed us to do multi-streaming, so, so now I stream on a few different platforms at the same time, so. But I've been streaming, I'm actually the first non-gaming partner on Twitch, so I've been, I've been around a long time. Alright, let's get this, let's, let's drill this hole here. I'm from the U.S. I, I come from the area called the Quad Cities. It's on the Illinois-Iowa border. Hey, no problem. Way to go a little bit into the collar there, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't know why I've always been good at that. Uh, I'm lining up the drill. Okay. So, let's see how, let's see how this is looking. I mean, worst case scenario, you punch a hole through the face in the wrong spot and you just have to patch it. It's no problem. Now the next task is to get these to line up how they're supposed to. So I think we have to use, we have to somehow shim them into place and then Greetings, fellow. We've got everything you need to rest and refuel. Hey, Sherry. Tier 3 sub, two months. It's been a pleasure to have you on board, Sherry. Thank you very much for the huge support with that tier 3 sub. You get to choose your destiny. We have Phoenix Ashes. Blood and Eye of Newt. Choose wisely, Sherry. Fate of the whole world is in the balance. As many as you can fit around the light. Um, so there'll be two. I think we're going to go with the thinner one, though, to be honest. Let's see. 
Ashes. Phoenix ashes. Okay. Oh. Oh, there's two in there. Holy cannoli. And a cork. That's two and a cork. One. Double whammy, okay. The cork's not making it easy. There we go. All right, double. As <laughs> a wisdom gnome had too much ale, exactly. We should never judge others without first taking the time to truly understand their perspective. Then judge away. <laughs> okay. And wisdom number two. Don't overlook the power of a small but significant decision. One step can lead to a thousand more. That's right. Every choice we have matters. To what end, we don't know. Find out when we get there. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's just see how this looks here. The smaller one will also be easier to shim the actual position we want it to be in. Shim is like when you stuff material next to something you know, like when you're sitting at a table... Here, here's a perfect description of shim. When you're at a restaurant and you're sitting at the table, and you notice the table is weeble wobbly, so you take a piece of napkin or paper or cardboard and you fold it up and you stick it under one of the legs, that's shimming. You're shimming the legs to stop the table from wobbling. So I need to shim... I need to shim this eye sprue... So it's in the exact spot that I want by stuffing things next to it. Steel stick inside of the shim. I'll probably use steel stick, but steel stick doesn't... We have to use something hard, like a little piece of wood or something first. My stream reminds you of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride from Disney, oh yeah? <laughs> it's funny. Okay, so let's see. So we got our holes. Let's feed this in here. Okay. So that goes down. The light's probably about here with the stem. So we need we need to carve, we need to cut a hole into the collar we need to we need to do some dremeling now let's let's map out the lines here oops something yeah i'll figure out something it could be even a little piece of of cured clay even something like that all right so this will go down here. This one goes down here. They meet in the middle. I'm just going to carve all that out. Okay, and then I have to be very careful, but we need to carve all of this out here. So we have room for the light with the rubber tube that holds the LED right there. 
Hmm. Yeah, we have to be very careful because what we don't want to do is we don't want to carve through the wiring. Otherwise, we're going to have to go all the way back up with wiring. Yeah, so, so the wire runs all the way up this structure and comes out right there. Okay. So we should probably go on this side here to be safe. And we need to carve a, a space for the LED that goes to, to, into the rib cage. Um, and then pops. Okay, right. I could see it right about here. Looks like we'll be able to get a hole to feed the LED light through. And then a little space for wiring. We just have to be very careful about any sort of carving right there. If we have to, we'll sculpt a, a layer above this out of epoxy clay. That will, that will give us some thickness under the back to cover anything else up. And then we'll also fill these holes with the epoxy clay. Yes. Okay, let's punch this hole through the rib cage and see, see how we're looking here. We'll start with a small drill bit. Hey, what's up, B.I. Diesel? And then we'll graduate to a larger one. I can't believe it. I I drilled halfway through this side and was doubting my lining up job. So I drilled through that side and matched the hole perfectly. Look at that. <laughs> All right. That works. Perfect. I'll take it. where we want the light to pop out through there. Yeah. Rum transfusion. Okay, so now, now we need a bigger drill bit so that the LED light can pass through. So, let's see. Your drill bits are here. Probably a little bit bigger than that. I'll try. I'll give this one a go.
All right, sounds good. PB, catch you later. Have a great weekend if we don't see you. All right, not quite big enough. Just, just like one size bigger would it would fit. Okay. Yo, fifteen sixty fours. Fifteen sixty fourths. One should be good. All right, Jin. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Catch you later. There we go. That fits. Now we can weasel it into position where we want it. Essentially, we want it to uh, pointing upwards. This is the biggest size, the, the five, five millimeter, I think.
Yeah, similar. Got some spotty vision now. All right, well, the pathway for that is there, and the pathway for that. And now we just need to make room for the wiring and then cut and wire it all up. Uh, no, I won't be streaming tonight. Mm. In fact, we're going to go ahead and pause there. And we'll get this in next week and continue this. It's kind of an in-between thing, so... But, um... We want to film the rest of this for social media. Because it's good, good stuff, so... So, we got the hard part done which is the, the hole drills of the eyes and the, the the punching the holes is always the scary part so all right friday yeah yeah so i won't be here tonight uh, i'm actually gonna get out of here now and uh start start the weekend let's stop here i want to thank you all for joining me we have to get ready to go on our mushroom hunt i went and checked the morel by the way in the backyard it's doing just fine can't wait delicious morel mushroom growing right in my backyard yeah hey thank you everybody for jo joining me this week it's been wonderful thank you for the support all the wonderful support um probably the last chance to send emma a gift if you'd like to for her birthday it's her fourth birthday. It'll be on Wednesday. We're having a stream party on Wednesday. So, um, and then there won't be there won't be any more action after that on Wednesday because we'll just take the day off and kind of do whatever she wants, you know. So, um, also we are still trying to get money together for uh, getting some wheels. So if anybody wants to chip in for helping us get a car, uh, we unexpectedly had our car deemed undrivable and I just we just don't have what it takes to get something going right now and uh, kind of calling for aid if anybody's willing to help with that and thank you everybody who has helped with that thank you very much uh, this Sunday is our class painting class so if you want to tune in and see some painting action uh, that starts at 9 a.m. on Sunday 9 a.m. Central Time. We'll be doing the second lesson of painting. Did that guy buy your old wheels? No. No, he didn't. But uh, we're actually thinking we're going to hang on to it and give it to my brother. Because he works on cars and weld, he'll, he can weld the frame up for himself. Because he doesn't have a vehicle right now. So, um, long-term game plan is to just kind of hang on to it and uh, give it to him he can do all the welding work and he can have it after that so because uh, other than other than the frame being busted it's a uh, everything else is good on it so so but anyways hey everybody what a wonderful week let's find somebody to raid i'm gonna get out of here i don't think i have anything else any other announcements or anything I shall, there, Techno Viking. I shall enjoy the mushroom hunt and the weekend. Always look forward to it. It's, it looks like the weather is beautiful outside right now, so we'll uh, do some grilling, drink some beers, drink a beer for you. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll, 
I'll make sure to let the missus know I get one extra for syrup. <laughs> one more extra bonus round. This one, no, this one's not for me. That's not, that's, that's for syrup. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, oh, hey, you know, let's go raid right Yankees doing outside work again. Let's get us all warmed up for the outside. Yankee Axe is doing some, some gardening, garden work. Okay. <laughs> uh, we get them every time with our tricks. <laughs> they just face palm our logic. Okay. All right. Till next time, my friends. Bye bye.